All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. to the methods of prediction or how to predict. So there are many potential methods to predict um, impacts and none, provide a, none provides a magic solution to the, to the predicted problem in which um, methods can be, cla be classified but classifications are not uh, mutually exclusive. So there is two types, um, two types of methods according to the scope of impacts. So first method is the holistic approach or holistic methods. However, um, holistic method is um, seldom used because holistic approach uh, specifically um, focuses on the primary environment. So it, it does not, um, it does not directly include the social and economic environment per se it only it only considers the physical aspect the environmental impact assessment um solely focuses on the um physical environment so an example would be on human um human beings fauna and flora soil water air climate and landscape uh, material assets and cultural heritage um, interaction between um mentioned in the first, second, and third um, index. So as what I mentioned on the previous lectures, on our case, on our EIA study, we always consider almost all aspects that could be affected by the certain project or certain um, activity. So that is why um, in the Philippines, or actually not only in the Philippines, but almost all throughout the whole world, um, that has an EIA system or EIS um, system, they usually use a uh, partial method or the most method per se. So it depends on the type of project. It depends on the type of impact. And um, it also depends on the extrapolative methods that is applicable to your specific project um, or specific activity. So when we say type of project, um, May it be um, on power, uh, power heavy industry, infrastructure, transportation. When we say type of impact, um, does it focus on pollution or does it focus on resource depletion or does it focus on ecosystem disruption? In which we can uh, specifically um, focus on a specific type of project or impact um, when, uh, when we assess the scope of of the impacts of a certain project or activity. When we say extrapolative, extrapolative methods, this is more of the predictions um, that are consistent with past and present data. So we actually have few types of extrapolative methods. Um, we have trend analysis, which is um, extrapolating um, present trends modified to take account of changes caused by the project. So um, we also have scenarios in which common sense of common sense forecast of future state based on variety of assumptions. So um, we can, um, with the scope of in uh, impacts, we can have, for example, scenario one, and this is the assumption, and this is the possible impact of the project or activity. This is scenario two, and then we can make an assumption as to what will be. Um, the possible impact of the certain project or certain activity. When we say analogies, this is more of the transferring experience from elsewhere to the present study. Um, so for example, on your case, um, the, you can actually make an analogy uh, based on the two AA study, uh, two AA study examples that I gave you. 
um, since they identified there as to what are the possible impacts of the building that are about or, or the building that they are studying. So you can make an analogy for that uh, based on those studies. Um, another uh, type of extrapolative method is the intuitive forecasting. This is the use of the Delphi technique to seek group um, consensus on the impact of a project. Um, Delphi method is a Delphi method is sort of a forecast uh, a forecasting process a framework that is uh, based on the results of multiple rounds of questionnaires sent sent to a panel of experts. So, for example, you have five panel of experts, and then you have a survey questionnaire, and you um, give them the survey questionnaire in which the panel um, experts will be answering the, the will be answering the questionnaire which is of course based on the predictive impacts um, that you um, identified and then uh, after several rounds uh, after several rounds after several rounds that the um, the panel of expert uh, answered your questionnaire um, um, the so after several rounds of um, of questionnaires are sent out to the panel of um, experts, um, as far as I, I can remember, the the responses, which is in anonymous, so it does not specifically tell as to where um, is the response came from, as to where the response came from the specific judge. So. Um, so yeah, the anonymous response are aggregated and then shared to the group after each round. And then the group, for, for example, uh, in your case, you are the group, your group um, will be um, aggregating the results and anonymously discusses the response of the panel of judges. And then from that, um, and then from, uh, and then from that, the group can aggregate as to which impact would relatively or I would say uh, would probably, um, how can I explain it? Um, and then um, based on, so, okay. So you have a set of questionnaires and let us say you have six panel of members and then you gave them a set of questionnaire round one. And then the panel of members, the panel of judges um, answered the questionnaire and then, um, from every round, you aggregated or you um, you aggregated or you um, I would say tally the result, and then another round again on the same set of questionnaire you gave again um, you gave again the, the the same questionnaire to the panel of judges or the panel of experts, and then they answer again, and then on the next round, and then up to I would say several rounds. I do not exactly remember as to how many rounds, but let us say um, three, four, five rounds. And then after each round, um, of course, you have to tally the results. And then after several rounds, you have to uh, make an average to that. Uh, you have to make an average to the results uh, based on the panel of judges um, answers. And then from that, you identify or you um, tally as to which impacts would tend, which impact would tend to have a more probability that would exist um, after the project or after the activity will be or have been or after the activity will be implemented. Um, in which, um, as a result, um, based on the panel of experts, uh, basically you can have or you can forecast as to what will be the most adverse impacts that could um, um, that could or your project or activity could could give um, yeah I hope I answered it yet later on on um, on the end of the class um, um, I will ask you if you if you got the Delphi method. <laughs> All right. So this is an example of the. Um, I think I have an. I think I have a, a, an example here on the Delphi method. I hope so. 
Um, this is an example of a trend analysis in which um, you can identify or or you can um, you can check if there is a pattern of change on a specific variables um, based on the possible impacts of your study. However, um, with trend analysis, um, you can know this after the project is being implemented. Um, however, of course, you can also, um, based on previous studies or based on other studies, you can have, uh, you can check as to what is the trend um, of their analysis um, based on their results. But basically, when we say trend analysis, um, we have to consider the time um, as to the effects or as to the impact of your study uh, after a specific time. The next method um, when it comes to impact prediction is according to the form of prediction. So 